Good afternoon everybody, uh, good Saturday afternoon everybody. Um, we're getting back to pack and stack a play now. And as you know, or some of you know, that every now and again I'll contact you and say, right, it's your turn, what would you like to see on the pack and stack? You know, give me a theme and I usually offer up V-dubs. Americana, American Muscle, JDM, Matchbox, uh, Movie Cars, Star Wars, you know, you know, them sort of things. And everybody picks off that list. Um, but this one was turned over to a good friend of mine, very good friend of mine, Chris Jones. Uh, a lot of you all know him, he posts comments up all over other people's channels, he's very much... Uh, in the community and very active and he said so I'd like to see a racing case a racing case uh, I've sort of done a 50-50 split between Naz and Gulf some of you all remember that so I don't like to repeat myself I don't want to bring you cars that you've seen over and over again so I got to thinking well racing that's a bit of an open mandate so i've took the idea and i've run with it as an open mandate it was interesting putting a custom case together for a friend and subscriber and i've never done that before and i don't know many people i have so this is a totally customized case for the wishes of one subscriber chris um like I say, he's at the art of the community, comments all over, lovely, lovely guy, no two ways about that, an absolute gentleman, and we've badgered him, or some of us have, to start making his own videos, of which he has just recently released his first video, very interesting, very slick, very naturalistic, and very comfortable for the fellow, I was so pleased with him, and Chris's channel is Diecast Dungeon, if you'd be so kind as to go across, check him out, give him a view, Maybe give him a subscription. He's only just started up. So we can all say we was there at the beginning. And I think I've got some cars. And I know a lot of you have got some cars and collections. Man, this guy, his collection is insane. We've been trading emails. I've seen some pictures. He's had a bit of a lifetime obsession. And his themes are cracking. Believe you me when I say he has got something that we'd all want to see and I'm hoping over the coming weeks, months, nay years that he delves into his diecast dungeon and shows some of these treasures off because for me they cry to be seen. There's some stuff I can only dream of, some stuff I've never even seen by miles degrees. I wouldn't even know it existed. So real nice guy, real interesting. Check him out, diecast dungeon. Uh, Chris. This one's dedicated to you, sir, exclusively. So, I took the racing theme. What does racing mean? You didn't say what kind of racing, what sort of floats your boat. So, we know these Plano cases have six different layers in. So, I'm going to attempt to do maybe five or six different sorts of racing here and hope I hit the mark. And also, people, uh, you know, the regulars that like a challenge, well, then I'm going to throw down this challenge do us a racing case. Show us a racing case. It can be anything you want. F1, Indy, street racing, off-road racing, hot wheels, team racing, one specific type of car in racing liveries. Hopefully I'll give you some ideas here. But yeah, let's do a little bit of customised um, challenging here. Um, show as many castings as you want. I think the normal limit's about 10, isn't it? Although you can go beyond that with honourable mentions and things that thrill you. But yeah, so this is this is Sol's first challenge to the community. Let's have a racing case and let's hope you get some ideas from the following 15 minutes. So let's crack on. So we know that we put the bigger castings on the bottom. So this is where the theme becomes a little bit loose, but then it tightens up and you'll know where I'm coming from. So... We've got a beautiful Jeep Wrangler here. I think most of you will see this. It's numbers D24. I'm taking this as an off-road racer. 
be it a dune racer, a cross country, something that you'd see in a Paris Dakar. Uh, big, big casting. It's Hot Wheels. They've done a number of these in different colours. And there we go. So, row one, number one, big old Jeep Wrangler. So, this is a big casting. And what does every racing team need? It needs a support vehicle. So, where is that race team support vehicle? It's a Duckham's, which was firmly a British make. And what you're looking at here, although it fits in with the size of the Jeep Wrangler, is actually a Land Rover. And it's from Corgi. So this is firmly all British. But it is lovely for what it is. It's all metal. It's a weighty piece. But yeah, so we've got a race team support vehicle there. Go with it, go with it. I bet you're thinking, hang on a minute, this is getting a bit patchy. We're looking for big vehicles to fit the bottom row. So we're going off back and forth between that dune racing and dune buggies, off-road racers. I guess a lot of you have seen this. Came in the multi-pack from Matchbox. And this is a Baja Beetle. Mostly plastic, but it's in that beautiful golf livery which thrills a lot of us. Just forgetting my old mate Mike Dyson there, he, he likes the close-ups for reasons I will not divulge. But as you can see, it's got a plastic motor there at the back. I'm not going to tell you this is top grade premium stuff, it isn't. But what it is, it's bang tidy and it's got that golf livery on. So there's another bit of a bigger casting for the bottom. And to finish this one, we change direction once again. I don't know what you call it around the world in England. We call them stock cars or super stocks. And it's these thunderous things with a ridiculous size wing on the top, which is usually full of uh, sponsorship deals on there. I suppose that's how these teams survive. This one's a bit of a fantasy light casting, but it essentially is the right shape for a super stock. I used to go stock car racing all the time. There was two tracks around my local area. Sadly, no longer with us. So, yeah, and I miss it terribly. But anyway, this, this one's um, got a beautiful title of The Dirty Outlaw. And no, people, I don't want to hear about a movie that you've watched from Silicon Valley called The Dirty Outlaw. So, so that's a sort of loosely based theme, all based around the race scenario. But now this is where the theme gets absolutely positive in direction. So, uh, Chris from Diecast Dungeon is known to me as the Corvette King. And if you know Chris, you know he has a absolute healthy fetish for Corvettes, all Corvettes. And so I'm going to do a full line of four Corvette racers. Um, so we'll start off with a 69. Um, it's just simply called a Corvette racer. It's a common old garden casting, fairly new modern casting. I'm not going to tell you it's absolute fine quality. It's just a main line. But a lot of you have seen this. Chris, I believe you own this anyway. But this is just a 69 Corvette racer. Okay, so we're not going to dwell on that. We've got two Grand Sport Roasters to follow. A race liveried number four. Again, I'm whizzing through these. I've noticed that my videos are getting longer. And uh, I've got a tendency to waffle. So there we go. Complimentary red wheels. We know this casting. Got the head protectors there at the back. And then following on from that one, different time period, different wheels. Again, I guess we know this one. Fairly modern casting. Very little in the way of details back and front, so I'm not even going to bother. But a nice complimentary tampos, number two. The previous one was number four. So 
So yeah, it's a good little honest casting. What do you want for a quid? A dollar. And then to finish this one off, this is one that you have seen before. So please forgive me, but it fulfills a line of racing Corvettes. And this is the beautiful, uh, beautiful premium quality one from the Hot Wheels um, Silhouette Racing Series. Uh, I believe this one was sent to me by my good friend David Johns from the worst YouTube channel ever. And of course he splinters off and he does wonderful customs uh, under his other name of Brookstone Customs. Check him out. So that's a full line of Corvette races. So that one was specifically dedicated. So now we're going to go totally off piste with four different race cars. And I've got away with this one. Under the moniker of Hot Wheels Team Racing. We know it well. They're a bit loud and a bit leery for me. But this is all under the series of Hot Wheels Racing Team. So I don't know where the hell this would fit in. But the looks of that and the spare wheels. I'd say that was an off an off-road desert racer again. Something like the Paris Dakar. But yeah, we've all seen this one recently. It's been coming out in different uh, colours. And I know it's quite a popular casting. It's quite a unique shape, isn't it, really? It's funky. A lot of uh, glass work in the top there. And I can see for the first time ever. I never noticed that lot. It's just like a little go-kart type thing in the back. So maybe that's a little racing team of its own. But... Yeah, so this whole row is for Hot Wheels Team Racing. And there's a Chrysler Pacifica. We've got a Shelby um, coming up here. And, well, it's a, it's, a, it's a Super Snake. I do believe it's the GT500. It is a beauty. I'll give Mac Dyson an extra special close-up of that one. Yeah, it's a good weighty casting. There's a lot of metal in this. I don't mind the wheels at all. They're subdued and don't take anything away from it. But we've got that now quite legendary Hot Wheels team racing. Number two. Beautiful Shelby. 4D. I know this one's up your streets here. Have you got it? I bet you have. So that's two. And you can see how these little things are building up now. So this is open to interpretation, okay? But getting back to the Corvette, we've got a C7R here. But again, it falls under Hot Wheels Team Racing. Look at the shape of that. That's almost Viper-like. It's all, almost Mercedes AMG. She's a beauty. I'm liking the shape of that one. Again, you don't get anything in the way of details. Back and front. But we can see how now these little themes are building up. And somehow, Mick, 67, you know what I'm going to say, don't you? They all tend to make sense now a little bit. So here's the final Hot Wheels team racing and an earlier piece. Uh, we know that because of look at the colour. The modern ones are in the dark, navy, metallic. And these are more a metallic sky blue. This is a Porsche. And we've got a little bit of basic engine detail in there. Again, this is something that you'd see racing Le Mans 24 hour uh, rally. Classic Porsche lines there. Um, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So now we've got Corvette racing and we've got Hot Wheels team racing. Let's go to street racing and I know this will turn people on like <laughs> Rat Black's diecast collection. Right, Ratty. Uh, Nitro Speed's a fan of these. I believe Gary is. Oh, God. Who's not a fan of these? So we'll start off with a weighty, weighty premium piece. I'm going street racing. And in my boyhood, I used to see movies and documentaries where people would race, gather Saturday nights, Friday, Saturday nights, and race there street cars down water diversion culverts i think that's what you cost uh, i think that's what you call them in america is it culverts 
where flood water runs off safely. But again, we are talking gases and Chevy gases at that one. So this is a beautiful, beautiful, I mean, look at the colour scheme on that. Purple and lime green. Would that ever go? I think there's only one answer. Hell yes. The big deal. Looks like it's from the 50th anniversary set. Or, or part of their celebrations. Uh, beautiful gas. So look at that lump of meat in the front there. Metal on metal casting. Very heavy. Good. Good detailing on the back there. And detailing on the front. Uh, there we go. And so this is a Hot Wheel. And as you can see, I'm only showing you this because it is metal on metal. That is a hellishly weighty piece. And what a beautiful gasser. I think that's probably my favourite gasser in, in my small collection of gassers. I ain't got too many. So I'm calling this street racing. I do believe this is a Chevy Bel Air. If it isn't, I know somebody will tell me it's not. You can see it's got some age patina on there. The, the bright work isn't so bright now, but in overall good condition i'd have to say nothing detail wise look at that classic front end when i get it in focus there she be yeah it's in good nick uh so yeah guess a number two what did i do people from america is it like a quarter mile half mile flora and go the sound of thunder and so i think a lot of us have seen this one Again, it's one of my favourite ones. It's loud, it's leery, it's brash, it's bold. It's got a beautiful stance to it. Again, I think a lot of you have probably seen this one. A lot of you probably own it. But I love this. Not as much as the first one. But there we go. There's gasser number three. And to finish this one off is that very special gasser, the passing gasser. That some of you have already got off me. Some of you, it's in the post, and some of you may get one. Um, I thought this was a Canadian import, but uh, Rat Black reliably informed me this is an Italian exclusive, and he purchased one off eBay for not an ins, uh, you know, not a, an insignificant amount of money. I was lucky, I, I was in the right place at the right time and procured a few of these. Um, but yeah, it's a beauty. It's from the Hot Wheels 50th Celebration, Italy. It's the Golden Age, and it's, it's all gold, gold wheels, gold engine, gold interior. And this is a passing gas that you may not have seen, or if you have seen it, you may not be able to obtain it so easily and so cheaply. So that finishes the four rows of gases off. I'm calling that street racing. And then we'll just tilt you up here. We know the format to the final two rows. And this one is firmly off-road racing. Again, that Paris Dakar theme. I love these. I only have four of these, but the, the vehicles are so varied and so wild. And so we'll start off with a matchbox, and this is a sonar shredder. A fictitious livery from matchbox, but you get the shape. It's a Jeep. They're all, they've always got some sort of netted over equipment in the back, spare wheels, because they have to do it on the run. There's no pit stops. There's no racing team following them. They are totally... On their own when they leave a stage post. But yeah, I'm not going to dwell on it. It's a good casting. Very little detail. But you put them in the case. And it looks lovely. And you'll see the next three vehicles are all very similar to this. But in different colours and slightly different designs. This one's the Baja Bullet. This is another Matchbox one. Definitely race orientated there from the livery. Would you be so kind as to focus? Hey, thank you. Again, all that equipment in the back, they have to take while they're going. Good weighty casting, this one. There's a hell of a lot of metal in it. 
and I'm not going to dwell on that mostly because it keeps going in and out of focus I don't know if it's the, the colour gold bouncing off my lights but the camera doesn't seem to like it today so you can see them two look similar so we'll carry on with the third one and this is just called off track and this is a Hot Wheels version I'm sure you some will be familiar again the spare wheels equipment in the back nice set of ball bars on there to knock danger out the way or skid along over an object but yeah good on this casting competitor 1000 there by the looks of it so again you put them together look and they all of a sudden make that theme this is about the second piece you've seen repeated but I got so much uh, great feedback against this and it's simply called the Hot Wheels DHR 55 um, in that Falcon race livery which so many of us love and I'd have got a beautiful team transport out which I haven't secured one yet all good things to those who wait but again that theme's repeated in the back wheels and equipment so them four can definitely be cobbled together as off-road racers dune racers get into focus come on now oh, where there we go that took some doing there we go so to fill up the final row on the top row I am firmly going for F1 stroke Indy. They're virtually the same thing to me. The cars look the same. I think the power's about the same. It's just that we've got two sides to the world if you want. One side's called F1, the other side's called Indy. I know F1 goes to America, but Indy doesn't really come to the UK, which I don't know why. Maybe it's cost prohibitive, but this piece, very, very special. You may have seen this before. It's a green light, so it's quality. I mean, look at the Firestone wheels. Look at that racing livery. And this is from the first person I ever contacted in the diecast car world. Johnny Roman from Toy Car Case. What a dear friend. What a super guy. And this is a promotional model put out for Klein Tools. So, again... I wonder how many of you actually have this piece. It's certainly special to me and it's in a prominent part of my collection. But this is actually an indie car. It says so on the bottom, but it's a green light. So it's a, a quality, great, great piece. Uh, oof, corgi, I suppose. F1 racer. Um, totally British make. Clinging on for dear life. And this is the Warrior Extreme Top Racing. You get a detailed driver there, look. Face riser down. And it's an old piece. And the, the wheels are a bit knackered. But I'm not prepared to change it because I love it. I think I picked it up from uh, a boot sale. I can see the Ford logo on there. See how badly... Jack that wheel is there. So, but I do love it in its original condition. And when you get him in there, well, if I turn that wheel downwards quickly. There we go. You'd never actually know there was much wrong with that at all. I suppose I could. I suppose I could try and straighten the axle out. Let me do my usual tip down. But hopefully not a tip over. So now them ones at the top become more apparent. This one is evocative from when I was a child. Because uh, it's a Matchbox F1 racer. But there was only one totally black car. Well I say black. It was black and gold. And that was the John Player Special. And that was a bit of a legend in this country. Again this is play warm patinaed. I think one day I'd like to strip it down and make it as good as new and maybe get some gold John Player Special uh, John Player Special Tampos to put on it. 
But this is what this reminds me of. The F1 race had a John Player special. And it was popularly followed in the UK way back when. I mean, it's technology overload now, isn't it, really? I understand the speeds that can go out. You've got to have safety cells and management systems. And uh, it's got a second-by-second second relay to the pit, hasn't it, telling you what's going on with the car, what's heating up, what might need changing out. Miraculous, but again, I, I like man and machine versus man and machine, not technology. And so the final piece for this case is uh, another F1 racer. And this time it's a matchbox. It's a little bit bigger scale. But again, finely detailed look. That is nice. Matchbox racing team, so it's fictitious. Excuse me. Fuel filler caps there on both sides. Good year, so they're obviously tied in. Good wheels. Nice old piece. I wonder if I can see a date on the bottom of this. 1981, so yeah, that's survived well. That has survived really, really well, considering that's 1981. And it's one of my favourite pieces. Although it's fictitious racing team. They've got the details accurate, so we'll do the usual tilt back, bring you down. I think we've just about got it all in shot there. So people, this is my interpretation of a racing car. So I'm putting the challenge down. Let's have some racing cases. It's not something we usually see or not something I've seen. Again, it can be multi-theme so long as it's basically attached to racing. Or you could go a full case of F1, a full case of gases. Oh, you know, this is the beauty of a challenge, isn't it? It is no hard and fast rules. It's your interpretation and this is what makes the video so interesting. It might be one colour racing car. I mean, if you've got, you know, one colour racing car, then, well, you must have a heck of a collection. So there's the challenge. Chris, this is for you, a racing case. I hope you like my take and interpretation to bring you some different trains of thought on racing. You didn't give me any mandate other than make sure it's a racing case. And I suppose this is the end of the video. However, just before I go, uh, there is a bright young fella out there that's doing some wonderful stuff, mainly with old Matchbox cars and new Hot Wheels cars. Real pleasant, intelligent young fella and it does my heart good to see that he's not wired into a computer, he's organic and he's got a fantastically nice collection of, I say, old matchbox, which he, you can tell from his voice he loves and he, he gets um, new hot wheels, he's got one or two gift boxes now and so I'd like to give a shout out to the future as far as I'm concerned of YouTube's diecast community and that his channel is called Team Modern Car so once again Team Modern Car like Diecast Dungeon please give them both a look out get a youngster your support you'll enjoy him he is very articulate he looks like he's been doing this for years well so does Chris to be honest but then Chris has got life experiences this young fella, you just sink into his pitter-patter straight away. He's slick, he's polished. So please check out Diecast Dungeon. New channel, be there from the beginning. And certainly check out Team Modern Car. I think you'll enjoy them both. Support them the best you can. So we're just coming up to the half an hour. So I have cut this down. Which means I'll get it all in one video and no part twos. Silly mistake again. So, from Sol Towers, you take care. You enjoy your bank holiday weekend. If you've got one somewhere in the world, please take good care of yourself and each other. And I will speak to you hopefully soon. So, bye-bye.